So come with us on a podcast journey as we reflect on the WDW Reflections Podcast. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the WDW Reflections Podcast. I am Dewey. With me today are my podcast travel buddies, my buddy Ron, my good buddy Tony G. So on one of the last shows, we talked about Tony and his wife Jen's adventures to Disneyland. But in that time, Ron has been on a couple of uh, uh, excursions. Uh, and actually, I just saw your bracelet. Why would you be wearing a bracelet that says Kenya on it, Ron? I'm very active in our church. And so we had the opportunity to go to Kenya uh, <laughs> to do some mission work and to partner with the church in Kenya. And um, so we took 14 days, um, but our trip it actually ended up being three trips in one. We flew from Chattanooga to Charlotte, but then from Charlotte to London. And we ended up sitting on the tarmac for three hours. So we got to London, we get off the plane. They're like, yeah, we don't have any flights to Nairobi for three days. What? Yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> so they're like, so you're going to hang out here until 1030 tonight. Then we're going to fly you to Cairo. Um, so we went and toured Cairo and got to see the pyramids. We did a camel ride. Wow. There's um, an area called the Cave Church, which is six or seven churches that are literally carved into the caves. One of them seats as many as 20,000. If you're ever in Egypt, I would encourage you to go check out the Cave Church. And then you drive through a place called Garbage City, but the people that live there work within the garbage, taking care of the waste and they live right within the waste and there is just wow. they separate it and get it ready for recycling and but they live there as well we also got to go to a museum and see the the mummies of the kings that was extremely interesting yeah it, de it definitely was just unique I, I mean i was definitely taking in being at one of the seven wonders and and just one it wasn't on our itinerary at all honestly we hadn't had a lot of sleep if you see the pictures which i'm sure we'll probably put some on there we'll i'm still some. i'm still wearing flip-flops because our luggage was lost wow so our whole travel it took us 60 hours to get to nairobi and we probably got how many hours 60 60 because right. of the overnight stay and everything yeah, the overnight stays oh yeah. okay i was yeah. gonna say we originally were supposed to meet our compat the some of us sponsor Compassion International Children. We lost our luggage and, and part of meeting your children is you bring them gifts and, and it helps with the the just breaking down the walls. What I sure. I really was not super concerned about the the interaction with the kids, thinking that I connect with kids all the time. This is gonna be great. Well, I didn't take into consideration one, they don't speak English because they've not been in school long enough. The Official language is Swahili and English, but until they go to school, they don't, their parents don't know English. So they learn it at school. So these are five year olds that we are sponsoring. So they didn't, they had an interpreter with them. And then they don't see white people. And I don't mean that that's not a, they just, mm -hmm. there's not white people in Nairobi. And so, um, when they see white people, they're just in awe and they, they almost just are in, they're in awe and just look at you. So it was very hard. Thankfully in Chattanooga's airport, I'd picked out these two magnets that had black bears on them and then said Chattanooga. And so I was able to give them each because we sponsored two. I gave each of them this magnet and it said Chattanooga, but I also had a picture in my phone of a real black bear that I could show them. And that 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 helped us interact and, and kind of connect. By the end of it, the little boy just really didn't want to let go. He was really uh -huh. he had really cleaned and 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 I wanted to get a picture of him holding up his magnet. And and I knew that he'd put it in it. They were wearing coats. It was 70, degree, probably 75 degrees. And I went to get it and he's like held like 
he didn't want to give it back. I'm like, no, no, you're going to keep it. I just want to you know, want you to hold it and get a picture. The smiles on their faces say it all. I know I saw a couple oh, of yeah. photos and the, the kids yeah. are, are have these huge smiles on their faces. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, that was very unique. And then of course the last part of our trip was the mission itself. And we partnered with a church in Nairobi. So there's three classes in Nairobi. You've got the wealthy, and then you've got what they call middle class, and then you got the slums. We weren't in the slums. We were in what the the natives there would were calling um, the ghetto. What we went to do is the church was really wanting to reach out to the community, and so an organization partnered with us that provided food. And so for four days we fed individuals and then evangelized to tell them about um, Christ and and do that. It was an incredible trip and life-changing for me. One, I've learned that Americans are very, very, very spoiled and it's just very, very expensive the for them to, to even live it was very eye-opening and they're very the people were so gracious and so accommodating we got the opportunity to help make food we fed ugali which is what they call african bread and it's i so i got to help make that that was a really cool experience um and we fed ugali and meat and then the other day we fed rice and beans I may come across naive here, but when I would see videos of help agencies helping people feed um, in foreign countries, it always looked like they were feeding them just something that would fill their stomach, right? Not, Not something that they would enjoy. Well, I was wrong. The, the African people, Ugali is one of their, I mean, literally one of their favorite foods. They, you can buy Ugali in a, in a nice high end, um, restaurant. Um, and so when they eat Ugali, they don't use, they don't really have utensils. Uh, I mean, they do, but they don't usually use them to eat because they use the ugali like we do like a biscuit is the only way I, and we they use that as their fork and the gravy and the meat and they just, just use it like that to eat and um and so what we were feeding them they were very they really enjoy that meal that's an african traditional meal and so we ended up feeding 1400 people wow and cool. then 72 um, made decisions so very nice it was a it was an incredible experience i'll definitely be going back it's something that um definitely hit my heartstrings to um be able to help and hopefully help the church grow that that at least will encourage people and help them find hope hopefully in a spiritual way that's beautiful was this was this your first trip abroad yeah, America. this is my first trip across the pond. So. That's a, that's an interesting way of. Oh wow, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And wrapping this back into Disney, yeah. would you now be willing to to try going to Jico or the other restaurant at Animal Kingdom that you said you would never go into? <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> I would love to go to Boma again to see um, what that's like. I'll be honest. When I first was going on this trip, I was probably more excited about the safari that we were going to get to experience. And then Nairobi has a national park that it's, they don't feed the animals, but it's protected. Nothing, humans can't hurt the animals, but the lions feed from what lives there. So it's not, um, it's not animal kingdom, but it had the feel of the animal kingdom. It had the feel of it. <laughs> if, if we, and you, you and I just went out, to drive, you just drive until you find an animal and then you just spend time looking at that animal. If wow. You what did you see when you were out there? So we saw rhinos, we saw lions, we saw, um, we didn't see zebras, we saw giraffes. I don't know. It was a, it was a unique experience, but I really wanted to go on a real safari. So, but all that to say that I was so moved by the people that the safari 
became kind of less important to me. That's what so you nasty. thought was going to be the highlight turned out to be background. After yeah, you, it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was inc- it was definitely enjoyable, and I'm glad we did it. But it definitely became second to what the the purpose of the trip really overshadowed everything. I did get to tr- we did go to one restaurant. And I got to eat ostrich. If you ever get the opportunity to eat ostrich, it's amazing. Really? Yeah. yeah it tastes just like chicken. No, it really, but I don't know what it, it had a distinct flavor, but it was really good. And they had made it into meatballs. What? Um, and it was, it was really good. You don't find that at Chef Boyardee. No, you don't. <laughs> or maybe you do. We don't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but it was a great trip and um, looking forward to going back. That sounds oh, amazing. You think uh, so? Is this going to be an annual thing? Is, is, like, I don't your know that it'll be involved, annual, or? but it will definitely be. Um, it'll definitely be something that has that has become a focal point for me. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. And I mean, it's really cool that you know most of the time when you hear travel nightmares, you hear stories like that about losing right. luggage and getting diverted and all that stuff. Your travel nightmares, you got stuck in Cairo, Egypt for yes, a day. Oh, exactly. you know what I mean? Like it even the the inconvenient part turned out to be pretty amazing. Yeah, it's it, it, this is a trip that a lot of us just imagine. And that's why I was bringing it back to the Disney parks because it's just an experience that we see the fake the fake experience that we see in in Animal Kingdom and in um at the lodge. It's it's interesting to know what the real thing is like. Yeah, and and that's a really good point because it definitely as I so I'm really glad you brought that up because I didn't think about the food I I have eaten at Boma, but I was I've really pushed myself to um, broaden my palate, if you will, and and I had not done that when I ate at Boma, and I just looked and like no thank you, and went to the kids buffet. Uh, <laughs> Um, oh my yeah. gosh! I, if I was your wife, I would have been hitting you with a stick or something. <laughs> that, I bet I paid big dollars for for um, chicken nuggets and. Um, yeah, I think that's a isn't that like sixty five dollars a person or something? Probably at, so. At I mean, we, we were on the Disney plan. Oh, okay, yeah. So. But now, but now you're gonna go and go. What? No ostrich? Yeah, what kind exactly. of place is You'd be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the entire show wherever podcasts are streaming or watch the complete episode, number 46, here on YouTube. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. See you real soon.